Good morning everybody, it's Tim Wilde here and um, I'm joining you this morning to talk a little bit about the concept of spiritual protection. Now I'm very pleased that this has cropped up because it's, um, it's proved that the feedback that I, I requested from everybody is, is working and um, it's a question that I get asked many many times when I'm either working in workshops or whether I'm working one-on-one -on -one via Skype anywhere on the planet and it's um, usually involves you know how do I protect my energy how do I keep myself safe um, you know like and and uh, usually at times when people are feeling vulnerable on their pathways now I've got a very kind of um, a very specific view on how we need to protect ourselves and how we should be operating in this manner because everything has changed so drastically since 2012. So I'm going to explain a little bit about how I view the necessity to spiritually protect ourselves, guard our energy um, and, and just generally proceed with this ascension process in a manner which is empowering ourselves rather than kind of standing in the shadows worrying about um, everything that's going on around us. Now I was brought up very specifically to um, with the with the belief or the consciousness that I needed to protect myself and protect my energy at all times. I was a very kind of vulnerable, very sensitive um, youngster and, um, and young adult and um, I would always be very kind of um, privy to the feelings or the conscious thoughts or the emotions of other people around me because I was, I was deeply clairsentient and still am, it's how I operate. And by the time I started kind of, you know, involving myself actively in, in spiritual matters, learning Reiki in, in the early 2000, the year 2000, the, the first lesson that I was taught was to guard my energy, protect myself from the kind of the harsh energies and the, the, the surrounding kind of 3D-ness of our planet. And so that was the belief that I kind of, one of the first beliefs that I incorporated. And those of you that have heard me speak live or have attended my workshops or worked with me one-on-one -on -one will probably be familiar with a story that occurred to me in 2008 as part of my major wake-up. We all have these kind of periods of time where something kind of fairly huge happens to us to kind of put us on our pathway and and show us who we are and where we're going and what we're supposed to be doing and um, this particular one was I'd been through an incredible life change and I was sat in my bedroom meditating feeling very kind of at odds with the world about what was going on around me and Archangel Michael appeared to me in a massive blue column of light and um, he handed me back what is more commonly known now as my blue star seal of Atlantis but he did so in a manner where he was he, he spoke to me very directly and this was quite odd for me at the time because like I'm I like I said I, I feel everything around me acutely I'm not so, so much one of these lucky visual people and uh, so there is, there's Archangel Michael kind of appearing to me in the, in the massive blue column of light in my meditation and he handed me back my blue star seal of Atlantis saying this was yours Tim, this belonged to you in Atlantis, it is now time for you to start incorporating the gifts and talents that you once had many years ago but also with the specific intention that I stopped asking him to protect me say 50 times a day he said I love you very much but it's now time for you to stand on your own two feet and manage your own energy and so obviously as, as I've said in the previous video the the blue star seal kind of cocooned me in my own biosphere and allowed me to manage my own energies and this is what I want to talk to you about this morning um, very specifically that on our path to mastery and and this includes everybody who's standing in their own light and their own power on, in the ascension process. We are kind of expected to be self-managing um, a lot more than we used to. It's the, the concept of protection for me has changed, spiritual protection. It became very obvious that 
um, in asking to be protected from an exterior kind of um, source, say calling an Archangel Michael to guard your energy and 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 you know because things may be difficult for you at the time or you're feeling vulnerable or there's this heavy dense 3D area that you don't really want to go to but you've got to and in doing so in calling in 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 this exterior protection we're in a way handing over our power um, and and kind of stating to the universe that we are in need and 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 helpless and vulnerable now in the vast changes that we've experienced, particularly in the last five years, I mean, I, when I say everything has changed, I, I, um, I'm not meaning that in a dramatic sense, I'm meaning in a practical, it really has changed sense. Um, our energies are completely different. We're operating now with a much higher version of ourselves with, this tw with our 12 chakra system returned to us, the expansion of our Merkaba and our fields. And um, on many occasions it's been shown to me that the, the concept of protection is, is changing and the fact that instead of needing this, this, this protection, this, um, the, the archangels or the masters or, or the benevolent extraterrestrials to kind of come and guard us like we used to, we are now in charge of the vibration of ourselves and that which is around us so the very simple and effective way that I believe that we should be kind of almost micromanaging our environments and our own energies is to raise our light to a level that actually changes everything around us now this kind of turns the concept of needing spiritual protection completely kind of upside down if you see what I mean because instead of us needing to kind of like, you know, hide away and, and feel vulnerable and sensitive, which many of us do at the times, there's incredible energies around at the moment. The, the way to deal with it, and I found this through my own personal experience, as with everything that I teach, the most effective way of changing the reality around you is to raise your light to a level that actually alters the energy structures of everything and everyone around you. So, say for example, you walk into a busy supermarket on a Monday morning, you're feeling tired, you're feeling a little bit, kind of, everybody's feeling a little bit kind of, oh, it's Monday morning, I don't really want to be here. If you're shining your light, if you've worked with, say you wake up in the morning and you activate your 12 chakra systems, your heart is open, your heart is shining, and you walk into this busy supermarket or bank or wherever, and you're doing so with the conscious intention of, of, of shining your light to everybody, you will find that your surroundings will raise to your vibration very, very rapidly. So instead of you being in a scenario where you're feeling like you, you, you kind of, you know, ducking and dodging and weaving from all of these energies, it puts us firmly back in the driving seat where we take our light and, and our light is actually the, the catalyst for, for everything around us raising to a higher frequency. Now it's almost habitual I've found in many cases sort of like you know to need especially when we're feeling vulnerable when we're feeling challenged to call in this this exterior protection but and it, and it takes some self-discipline to kind of change that, that, that kind of mental blockage almost, where we're kind of like, right, okay, I am feeling a little bit low, I am feeling vulnerable. Um, I've had many tests and many challenges at this particular period of time, but I am going to hold my light high and bright and walk into the world and, and shine. And the effect will be instantaneous. You will notice that everyone and everything around you will respond to this light in a positive manner. Now that is, to me, the most effective way of protecting, and I use that word in, a, in, in inverted brackets, protecting your energy. Because if you are shining, if your heart is open, if your light levels are high, no matter, you know, we can all, we can all be challenged at any moment, any time, but it is still very possible to hold your light high no matter what you're going through. Your physical challenges, your emotional, mental and spiritual challenges, do not necessarily affect your light levels unless you are taking a conscious drop. So 
shine brightly wherever you go and watch the reaction of the people consciously and unconsciously and also the energy in your environment and it brings me also to the subject I mean a few people have mentioned to me about kind of I mean subjects such as implants I'm, I'm going to mention it usually I kind of steer conversations in my workshops away away from anything which is what I would consider a low vibration but this kind of thing needs addressing at the moment because it's in every it's in a lot of people's fields of consciousness where they feel that somebody on an exterior level is interfering with their energy or 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 extraterrestrials or or whatever or whoever is kind of maybe implanting them with energies or 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 exterior kind of etheric objects that interfere with your vibration and your light the simple answer is this stuff cannot touch you if you are vibrating at a higher frequency it can only enter your fields if you have either a given it permission to do so b got a contract with this person or exterior exterior entities or c that you are vibrating at the same frequency as a temporarily or not temporarily as whatever you are supposed to be receiving so the trick is to keep your light high in and and you'll notice that if there's any energies being sent to you that are less than savory if you're if you're having a hard time with a person that has been in your life or you know is is trying to contact you on an etheric or a spiritual level you raise your vibration and and you will notice that your fields become like teflon everything slides off now this goes across the board this this applies to absolutely everybody on this ascension pathway because the minute we take charge of our energies the minute we we say to the universe i am a master i am standing in my own power i am standing in my own light your the the response and the energies that you receive from your surroundings totally changes so if you have a belief that you are being kind of contacted by by less than savory forces or or this this concept of kind of not so benevolent extraterrestrials who kind of you know can come in and do the implants i'm not saying uh, at all that this does not happen but it's very easy to rectify in in particularly at this moment in time because the more people that kind of take charge of their ascension process and say look this is my light this is my space and and raise their frequency to this this higher level this fifth dimensional target that we're going for this stuff just simply kind of disappears it's no longer in the biosphere of, of your reality so to speak so give it a try and and the, and you know I'm here to answer any questions that you may have on this subject I'm very kind of versed in in the entire kind of concept of, of spiritual protection and and kind of almost dealing with with the kind of the other the other side so to speak um, due to my own personal experiences and my training before coming down to this planet and um, another effective way of keeping your energy in your space very very high bright and clear is using crystals crystals yay everybody loves crystals now they're not just pretty garments or, or tools or decorations they are a they are a working facet of our life now one thing I always do to keep my house clear because I'm, I'm a parent I have children you know the energy it goes up and down like a yo-yo continuously is creating a kind of a crystal grid or or almost like it's it's our own personal 5d biosphere within the house and I'll take one or more crystals um, and place them in various kind of strategic strategic points around my property and I will ask these crystals to maintain a fifth dimensional vibration it's very simple working with crystals is not complicated they respond to your intention so whatever you are requesting the crystal will become particularly if you're familiar and you have a lot of contact with this crystal it will it will be reading what you want it will be tuned into your energy fields so take your favorite crystal um, it could be large it could be small it really doesn't matter they're all as powerful as each other and 
hold it in your left hand and consciously cl close your eyes and consciously activate it and ask it to maintain a fifth dimensional frequency and in your mind's eye allow the crystal to expand its energy out from the point where you lay it or you are standing or sitting or, or meditating and when you are confident or sure that the, the field of energy around you covers you, your property, your loved ones in either a circle or a pyramid or a diamond or whatever shape you feel most comfortable with, ask the crystal to then hold it and maintain it and you will find that the crystal will then have projected a conscious field of light and fifth dimensional energy around you and your property particularly useful if you carry your crystal with you. I carry my crystals everywhere with me. I have one in my pocket most of the times or in my man bag that I'm carrying around so either, either to the shops or to events and they alter and assist our energy levels on a permanent basis. This is what they're here to do. They're here to actually completely help us transform this planet into a higher, a higher place, a higher field of light and this is why they have come forth in their various shapes and their sizes and their beautiful colours and range and spectrums of vibrations so work with your crystals because they're not just here to kind of um, decorate your altar or, 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 or make your workshop space look prettier they are conscious working tools as many of you know but you can specifically ask them to do very 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 kind of you know pinpoint jobs and so if I want to say so therefore I if I want to keep my house in, in a in a I, I use a pyramid I tend to use a pyramid shape because it's a geometry I'm familiar with and it's also very kind of it's very protective as well so I tend to activate a pyramid within the center of my house that covers all bases north south east and west pretty much every two days to make sure that the energy is continuously fifth dimensional not just for me but for my family as well because people come and go they bring in energies and and you'll find if you've got this field of light around your property anything that you don't particularly want in your house will be kind of like hug on the door waiting for them when they leave so that's another way of doing it and so this is this is me talking about spiritual protection this morning our best protection is to walk into the world, whatever we're doing, with our very shining, very bright open hearts and watch everybody else around us raise to our frequency. The concept or the need to kind of um, withdraw from, from reality um, is, is one that's very familiar with me. I went through a long period of time where I simply felt that I could not cope with the vibrations of others and it wasn't until that I mastered my own reality, my own vibration, that it became a lot easier for me to kind of, you know, inter integrate with this world, this, this, this beautiful, varied, rapidly changing world that we all live on. And it all started with this conversation that I had with Archangel Michael, that, that very, very memorable morning where he handed me my Blue Star Seal of Atlantis and um, told me to manage my own energies and, and step into my mastery and that was really the start of my major journey and also brought me back to all of my um, gifts and talents that I had in Atlantis. I mean I'm only really even with everything that I have on my website scratching the surface of what we have available to us over the coming years and it's, so it's, um, it's exciting times. Now if you want to know more about the blue star seal or now the gold star seal which i covered in 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 one of my earlier videos go to my website www.timwild.com or visit my facebook page my facebook page is very active i'm continuously on there and and posting updates and ascension information and it's tim wild practical ascension so come and drop us a like say hello and 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 if you've got any questions then I'm that's what I'm here to do I'm here to answer and and kind of crunch down sort of what seem like insurmountable problems into manageable structured form um, because this ascension process it can be challenging but it can also be very it's a lot of fun once we master the energies of this planet so I hope you all have a lovely day 
and um, I'm looking forward to any feedback on, on this because this, this particular question is one that has been posed to me many, many times. So keep your light high, bright and clear. Keep your manifestation sharp and go out and enjoy the world. You know, it's, we're, not, we're not here to hide our light, we're here to shine brightly. So lots of love to you all and I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.